Hello everyone. This is actually my second video for today using this Birdie Brown Every Day is a Picnic stamp set. My first video I showed using Copics to color the image and since I've been doing watercolor like a crazy person lately I wanted to do um, watercoloring to color in the image and this time I'm going to use my um, dye ink pads to color it in. So I inked up the stamp with MFT's Black Licorice Hybrid Ink and stamped her onto the die cut that's from the same um, set, it's the Every Day is a Picnic Dynamics, that I had die cut from some Tim Holtz Distress Watercolor cardstock and I made sure to die cut it so that the smooth side was facing up and then I'm stamping it on the smooth side. And then I'm just laying an acrylic block over a piece of cardstock so that I can see better and then just smushing my ink pads right onto the acrylic block to basically use it as my little palette. So I used insulation pink natural and craft dye inks and then a tiny little bit of pink lemonade there on the edge and I'm going to kind of get that out of the way so I can get in here and start coloring. And all I do is wet my paintbrush and then I wet the area I'm going to work on so I always start with the skin it's just habit with me so I dampen the area I'm going to color and then I just started picking up my colors and I do kind of the same thing as I do with Copics. I kind of go from lightest to darkest. So I applied the insulation pink and then added a little bit of natural and then a little bit of craft ink in the darkest areas. And while everything was still wet I picked up a little bit of that pink lemonade and added it to her cheeks. And then I'm just going to leave that spot and go on and finish her arms. So same thing, I just dampen the cardstock with clean water and then add a little bit of the insulation pink, a little bit of the natural, and a little bit of the craft and kind of let them do their own thing and kind of blend themselves together. So really, really simple, nothing too fancy. So it's just a matter of basically picking up the color and applying it to the damp cardstock. So once I'm done doing all the skin, I use my heat tool to dry everything so I can go on to the next area. So I had originally meant to do the hair with um, MFT's Hot Fudge ink, but I didn't like the color that one turns with um, when you add water. It's a kind of a green tone of ink that you kind of notice more when you stamp with water, or like add water to it. So rather than use that, I cleaned it off and just grabbed the chocolate brown ink, which I like much better. That's more of a true kind of nice brown with a bit of a red undertone, I guess you'd say. <clears throat> so use that instead. And yeah, since the skin area was completely dry, I'm able to dampen the hair area and start adding the color in there. And just using the one color, you just, um, I added in more wet at first, and then as everything began to dry a bit and the brush began to dry, I still kept picking up the color. This is just called dry brushing, and it just gives it that little bit more detail, and you're only using one color. So left that area. I didn't need to use my heat tool since I'm just going on to a whole different spot and decided to do her little shorts. So I used Night Shift Blue Ink for that. And then making sure everything's dry so I can go on to other areas. You always want to make sure each section is dry because if you start going and adding in more water and adding more color, everything's going to start to bleed into each other. So made sure it was all dry and then I'm going to go in and do her little hat. So got it all wet with clean water and then I'm just picking up Lemon Drop Ink and I accidentally got the area wet at the top of her face there and added way too much yellow. So I just got it damp and then used a piece of paper towel to kind of pick up that extra yellow ink. And I went back and just did it again. I was smushed down a little bit of natural and insulation pink ink and got the area wet, kind of went over it again with watercolor and fixed it right up. So the little tiny bit of yellow I don't mind, but I didn't want this like big splotch of yellow on her face. <laughs> so once that's all done, I'm going to go in and start doing her little shirt. So I'm using red hot ink for that. So got it really wet and I'm using a pretty detailed paintbrush. It's the same one I use for the whole thing, but it's got a kind of a nice little detail tip, which is good to get into these teensy little areas and got everything wet and then just pick up the color. And if you want, you can start, you can dilute the color like right on the block. You know, you know, apply lighter color as a wash that way, but with this I was pretty much just picking up the color direct and then letting it kind of blend itself out. So got everything painted. I'm not worrying about it being super perfect and neat because again this is watercolor. So if it goes outside the lines a little bit and that kind of thing, it's totally fine. That's just the nature of it. So I mixed um, the little lemon drop and the red hot right there on the block just to create a little bit of an orange and that's how I did the little centers of the flowers. 
and then add a teensy teensy bit of the lemon drop to the daisies just a, for a little yellow hint and then I use sour apple ink for the leaves. So I will have all these inks listed in the supplies because I used a ton. But yeah, I'll have them all listed so you guys know. But you can use, obviously, any dye inks will work. And if you have ink refills, you'll get super saturated ink. But that's another video for another day. <laughs> so since I had die cut the main image, I'd run all the dyes through at the same time because they were all connected. And I die cut um, the basket and the little butterflies from this set, again, from watercolor paper. So I stamped those as well onto the little die cuts with the hybrid black licorice ink and the basket I got um, damp in the whole area and then I'm coloring it in with the same just natural and craft inks so that it's all colored in and then the little butterflies I just did the same thing with the red hot and lemon drop I kind of mixed them together a little bit with the water and the palette in the middle there just to create a nice little orange so I've got these nice like kind of gradient bright butterflies only using two colors but they look like there's a lot more going on there so really really easy and then those I just set aside to dry if you wanted them to dry really quickly you'd have to grab them with um, tweezers to heat set them because otherwise you'd burn your fingers and then for the Sun I did I don't know I just didn't want to watercolor it I guess so I die cut it from some MFT banana split cardstock and then just stamped it with lemon drop ink and then I'm going to go on and use, this is the new Gingham background stamp. So I'm inking it up really well with uh, Sweet Tooth pigment ink. And then I've got two pieces of Red Hot cardstock. And I could have done just one large piece and trimmed it down. I don't know why I decided to do it two separately and I got ink everywhere and made a big old mess. But I needed two pieces. I wanted one for the front and one for the inside. And then I'm going to coat it with um, white embossing powder. And I wasn't being particularly careful. I didn't use my little um, anti-static tools or anything. And I didn't stamp it perfectly either. It just kind of works. I'm trying not to be so OCD and perfect with everything. So I just went with it being not perfect. <laughs> so holding the bottom and then embossing the top and then I'd rotate it so that I wasn't burning my fingers. Um, got that all melted. And I've had people asking like what am I talking about when I do, when I'm mentioning that I'm following a sketch. So when I am following a sketch, I usually snap a picture of it on my phone and then you can see here I just set it beside my card so that I can follow the sketch along to make sure I'm getting it somewhat the same. It usually doesn't have to be exactly the same. And in this case, I decided to flip the sketch around and do it um, upside down. This is the current one though on the MFT blog and I'll always link to those in the blog post. So you'll see a picture of the sketch and then there'll be a direct link so you can check it out and decide to play along if you want. So once I know how I've got my layout going for the sketch, um, I die cut a piece of sour apple cardstock with the grassy edges die just to go along the bottom. It's not necessary, but I just thought it kind of finished it off and looked really cute for this little scene. And then everything else was popped up on foam tape just because I can. So natural cardstock was my um, card front base here. And then I'm going to adhere that to some smooth white cardstock. And today's card is an A2 size card. The one I made earlier was a four bar card. So I'm just jumping around with everything. So I had die cut another piece of the sour apple cardstock with the grassy edges die and then I adhered it to the back of that second piece that I had stamped and embossed with the gingham background. So it kind of looks like you know a little picnic blanket there laying in the grass. And then I'm going to hear the little picnic basket I colored and that's all there was to it. So there will be, of course, more info on my blog about this release because some of the links will not go live until next Tuesday. But yeah, all that info will be on my blog along with a list of all the supplies used. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all next time. Bye!